The body of a maid slain by an unknown perpetrator in the dark of night. It is a mysterious case which has all the elements expected to be found in an Agatha Christie novel. A remote country house situated in a sleepy English village, a secret rendezvous at midnight during a thunderstorm, and cold-blooded murder. Peasenhall is a remote village situated in the East Anglian county of Suffolk, England. In the early 20th century, Providence House was a prestigious country home located within the vicinity of the village. The local Baptist elder and tailor, Mr Deacon William Crisp, resided there alongside his wife. In the early 20th century, Crisp hired a 22-year-old woman called Rose Annie Harsent as a maid at Providence House. According to those who knew her, Rose was a lively young woman who was very attractive. She was born in March 1879 in Peasenhall and had a brother named Henry, known as Harry, who was nine years her junior. Rose was also a devout member of the Sibton Methodist Church and was a singer in the choir. Upon arriving at Providence House, Rose was given her own sleeping quarters at the very top of the building. From the attic room, there was a staircase leading towards the kitchen and a small window that looked out onto a nearby double dwelling between the Swan Inn and Angel Inn. This was where William Gardner and his wife, Georgina Cady, lived alongside their six children. William Gardner was a 35-year-old man who worked at a local seed drill works called Smith & Sons. He was also a church elder who was a Sunday school teacher and led the choir in which 22-year-old Rose Harsent sang. Gardner was, at the time, a very well-respected member of the Peasenhall community. On the night of the 31st of May 1902, a lightning storm hit Peasenhall at approximately 11.30pm, the treacherous conditions forcing many residents to take shelter indoors from the torrential rain. As the storm raged on during the evening, Rose received a letter, seemingly from an anonymous source, which read, Dear R, I will try to see you tonight at 12 o'clock at your place. If you put a light in your window at 10 o'clock for about 10 minutes, then you can take it out again. Don't have a light in your room at 12, as I will come round to the back. Rose followed the instructions laid out in this letter, lighting a candle at 10pm and making her way to the back door at around midnight. However, in doing so, Rose was violently attacked, brutally slain in the night by an unknown perpetrator. The following morning, on the 1st of June, Rose's father, William Harsent, visited Providence House to return some fresh laundry to his daughter, entering through the back door and through into the kitchen. However, it was at this point that a gruesome scene befell him. His daughter, Rose, was lying lifelessly at the bottom of the stairs, surrounded by a pool of blood. She was wearing only her nightdress and a pair of socks, the former appearing to have been burned. At first glance, it appeared that Rose had perhaps accidentally fallen down the stairs and during the fall, an oil lamp she was carrying caught her dress and in turn went up in flames, but this was far from the truth. The scene had been staged to look like an accident. Rose's face was severely bruised, her throat had been slashed from ear to ear and she had been stabbed in the chest numerous times. The young woman also appeared to have defensive wounds on her hands. It appeared that the killer had tried to burn Rose's body using paraffin as a bottle of the substance was found near to her partially charred body, with her arms and legs badly burnt. An oil lamp was also found nearby, perhaps used by Rose whilst on her way to the secret midnight meeting, or perhaps it was possessed by the killer. Discovered beneath Rose's head was burnt pieces of a newspaper, which authorities presumed was used to start the fire. 
What is interesting about the newspaper shreds was that the scraps were torn from the East Anglian Daily Times. This newspaper was not read by anyone in Providence House, but it was read by their neighbour, William Gardiner. Authorities promptly arrived on the scene to conduct their inquiries and to investigate Rose's death. Meanwhile, her body was taken to the morgue for a post-mortem examination, which revealed very interesting information. Rose was unmarried, however, as it transpired, during the autopsy, she was found to have been six months pregnant at the time of her death. Rose had allegedly refused to tell anyone about the father of her unborn child and even tried to have the child terminated at one stage. However, the abortion attempt failed. Rose tried to keep her pregnancy a secret for as long as possible so that she didn't face losing her job at Providence House. Whilst conducting various inquiries into the gruesome Peasenhall murder, police discovered that in May 1901, two local men, George Wright and Alfonso Skinner, witnessed Rose Harsent entering the so-called Doctor's Chapel at the church, with William Gardner following suit, looking rather suspicious. George and Alfonso discreetly followed Gardiner into the chapel, placing their ears up against the walls to listen in on what was going on. The two men reported hearing Rose laughing and making noises of a sexual nature. This was followed by Rose telling William about a part of the Bible she had been reading, which explained what they had just been doing. According to various sources, George and Alfonso claimed that Rose spoke about chapter 38 of Genesis regarding a passage suggesting sexual relations. Following the secretive and scandalous encounter, George Wright and Alfonso Skinner spread their shocking tale like wildfire, and before long, the residents of Peasenhall were whispering of a secret rendezvous between a church elder and a servant. With Peasen Hall being a very small place, it didn't take long for the news to get back to William Gardiner himself. At around 10pm on the night in question, witnesses saw Gardiner speaking with a neighbour about the impending storm. He denied all of the allegations made against him, but this didn't stop him from finding the two men who had eavesdropped on him. He demanded that they wrote apologies to him, but they refused. William was left angered, and what made matters worse was the fact that the church elders were considering investigating the claims made by Wright and Skinner. An unofficial trial conducted only by church elders occurred, however it ended with a not proven verdict. Not long after this incident, a local preacher named Henry Ruse saw Gardner and Harsent in an alleyway together. Ruse spoke to Gardner following the incident, warning him that he should be careful. Ruse did not want any scandalous activities that Gardner was engaging in to harm the reputation of the church. Gardner allegedly apologised to him and insisted that he would be more discreet in future. After learning of Rose and William's affair, investigators were convinced that Gardner was the father of Rose's unborn child, and after investigating the crime scene further, he became the prime suspect in her murder. A man of such reputation in the local church couldn't afford to have such a secretive affair exposed, let alone have a child born out of wedlock as a result. Police believed this alone was motive enough for William Gardner to have killed Rose Harsent. Much of the evidence found didn't exactly favour William Gardner. A neighbour allegedly saw him on his front steps at around 10pm on the night of the murder, bearing in mind his residence was just across from Providence House. William appeared to be waiting for something, and the neighbour noted a light coming from a high room in Providence House. This seemed to match up with the anonymous letter which asked for a candle to be lit at 10pm by Rose. Police compared William's handwriting to that on the anonymous letter found in Rose's bedroom regarding the meeting at midnight, and there were a number of striking similarities. 
This, along with the fact William was seen outside his residence as the candle was lit from the top bedroom window, certainly makes it seem as if he was the anonymous writer. It is also alleged that the envelope used to send the letter was one which was used at the seed drill works where Mr Gardner worked. A local gamekeeper also claimed to have seen a pair of muddy footprints leading to and from Providence House and the gardener's residence in the early hours of June the 1st. After comparing a sketch of these footprints to shoes owned by William Gardner, it was clear to police that these footprints had been left by him. Another witness claimed to have seen Gardner starting a fire near to the wash house just an hour prior to Rose's body being discovered. It is entirely possible that Gardner could have been burning evidence, such as bloodstained clothing, although William's wife claimed that he was just boiling some water. Also, rather interestingly, Mr and Mrs Crisp claimed to have heard a scream and a thud in the night, although apparently this claim was not investigated further. This is perhaps due to the fact that the thunder and lightning continued throughout the night and the noises they heard could have simply been caused by the heavy storm. Authorities tried to find the murder weapon and in doing so became interested in a pen knife owned by Mr Gardner. The knife had spatters of blood on the hinge, but unfortunately, experts couldn't decipher whether the blood was human or not. Upon being questioned about the blood, William Gardner claimed it was from a rabbit he had disemboweled, but of course, these claims could not be verified. The bottle of paraffin found at the crime scene was found out to have belonged to William Gardner's son. Evidence against Gardner was stacking up. It is widely speculated that Rose actually initiated the midnight meeting and that perhaps she was going to ask Gardner for a financial contribution to provide for their child, but in order to save his reputation, William killed Rose. Police questioned William Gardner extensively, but he blatantly denied having any involvement in Rose Harson's death. He denied having an affair with her denied ever meeting with her that night and even denied being the father to her unborn child. Gardner claimed that he was home in bed, a story which was backed up by his wife Georgina. However, despite this, police charged William Gardner with Rose's murder. On the 7th of November 1902, William Gardner went to trial in Ipswich for the murder of Rose Harsant, with Henry Fielding Dickens, son of famous Victorian novelist Charles Dickens, acting for the prosecution. The defence tried to throw blame onto a 20-year-old neighbour, Frederick James Davis, who was known to have had deep affections for Rose, and had even written explicit reading material for her as per her own request. However, Frederick was ruled out of having any involvement in her death. The key witness for the defence was Georgina Gardner, who was adamant that her husband was home all night when Rose was killed, something which was backed up by a neighbour who was awake for the entire night because of the storm. She never saw anyone leave the Gardner residence during the night or in the early hours of the morning. Georgina could not be trusted as a reliable witness, however, due to the fact that she was incredibly loyal to her husband. Despite the claims made by Georgina, the evidence against her husband was damning, despite most of it being purely circumstantial. The jury retired to consider their verdict at 4.15pm, returning to the courtroom at approximately 8.40pm. Unfortunately, the jury could not reach a unanimous decision. Eleven were in favour of conviction, one was not. Therefore, William was made a free man. A second trial was then held, commencing on the 21st of January 1903. However, once again, the jurors failed to reach a unanimous decision. A third trial was considered, but authorities did not believe that they would secure a conviction. After all, so much of the evidence against William Gardner was circumstantial. The case was subsequently dismissed, and as a result of this and never-ending suspicions from Peasenhall residents, the Gardeners moved away to the south of London, where William lived out the rest of his life and passed away in 1941. 
Despite all of the evidence against William Gardner, many believe that he was innocent, that he was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Some do speculate, however, that William may have been covering for someone, if anyone, most likely his wife, Georgina. It is entirely possible that, upon discovering her husband's affair, she became enraged with jealousy and, as a result, killed Rose, but there is no solid evidence to support this theory. Many questions still remain regarding Rose's murder, such as why murder a pregnant woman in cold blood? Was it carried out to protect a reputation? Why stage the crime scene to look like an accident when so much evidence, on the contrary, was left behind? Was William Gardner actually the biological father of Rose's child, or was it someone else? Who was Rose going to meet at midnight? It was rumoured that Rose had a string of lovers in Peasenhall. Perhaps one of these men were involved in her callous murder, but even if they were, police never caught them. William Gardner is one of few men in Britain whose case never reached a conclusive verdict. He was never convicted of the crime nor acquitted, and over a century on, the case remains unsolved, with her killer never identified. Rose Harsant was laid to rest on the 5th of June 1902 in Peasenhall Cemetery, the cross above her grave bearing an inscription which reads, In affectionate remembrance of Rose Annie Harsant, whose life was cruelly taken on the 1st of June 1902 in her 23rd year, a light is from our household gone, a voice we loved is stilled, a place is vacant in our home that never can be filled.